my name is Devi Mudli. Um, I'm from NetBank. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about how we moved from a science experiment all the way to an enterprise rollout. Um, to give you context of NetBank, um, NetBank was founded in 1888 when unicorns were actual mythical creatures, clouds were things that you looked at for rain, and hashtags were actually sharp signs on a music stave. So that's the context of NetBank. And with that tradition, and being a traditional bank, we have to comply with local and international regulation. Non-compliance is actually quite critical. It's a reputational risk, um, heavy fines, and the ability to actually lose one's banking license. To a DevOps team, that means you don't exist any longer, so it's very touching for us. Um, and with all of that, it's an extremely large organization. Um, from an IT perspective, we have over 3,000 resources, about 65% of which are made up of dev developers and operational staff to actually align 3,000 technical people with egos that fulfill this entire room is actually quite, quite a difficult, daunting task that we actually have to, you know, have to actually sort out at the end of the day. Um, NetBank's investment um, in, into um, new projects and new technology is actually over a billion rand per annum. Um, our technology underpins our entire strategic intent. We started our digitization journey about four to five years ago, and with that came adoption of agile practices, and about two years ago, we started adopting the concept of DevOps. And that is when the, the science experiment actually started. And it's wonderful being in a lab working with a few people who share your mindset and you can start playing around with some really cool toys and you, you're in a very controlled space while you're building this practice. We then realized it wasn't just about playing, we actually had to plan it, like a, a roadmap, like a proper architect's roadmap. What were the first things we were actually going to start looking at? Where would we get our biggest bang for our buck? Where would we have the easiest transformations? And we started with our front end and our API stacks, but the reality of a bank that old is, there's mainframe. And how do you do mainframe? How do you do DevOps in a mainframe? How do you do DevOps through your entire stack so you can actually leverage the benefits of DevOps in its totality? With us scaling at that, to, to that extent, it also brought on a financial component to it. So we, they, we had to move from open source to actually enterprise type uh, stacks, enterprise types, uh, type software. We then had to start speaking to a very Greek CFO. What that meant was we had to become finance people and understand how do you talk to a CFO? How do you demonstrate the benefits? How do you do things like MVPs, payback periods? Techie people don't do stuff like that. Plastic buttons, as Dave called them, doesn't teach you how to do a proper financial analysis for an investment that you actually want to start doing. And, you know, I, we, were, we were really proud. We had CI, CD pipelines across all of our stacks. We, we knew, and I think this was one lesson, and it's really important, that you need to put the fight in for the right tooling. Do not be influenced and do not back down. Make sure you get the right tools for the right job. Um, you know, it, it was, we, we started growing our credibility in the organization. People actually could spell DevOps. <laughs> 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 and, and, and then we started landing the message that DevOps is not done by a bunch of really cool people in the corner. DevOps is actually done by everyone in the organization. 
and that's when we realized um, we had to grow up because doing DevOps was no longer something that was easy. Scaling started to become difficult. We had some, we had some advantages and our advantages was as an organization, we were no longer just four banks in South Africa. Um, many more people had their banking licenses. The unicorns, we realized, were actually uh, startups that were eating us for breakfast. So we had a burning platform for change. Um, we were extremely fortunate. Our CIO gave us the mandate to actually roll out to DevOps. While it was on paper, we still fight on a day-to-day -day basis because there are people that believe they know more than we do, but we deal with them. <laughs> we had money. Even though we had a fight with the CFO, we had money. We had investment from the organization. We had some willing buyers who were able to, uh, you know, who were willing to be our guinea pigs, who were willing to try out things for us, who were willing to take the risk. But I think for me personally, standing up here, my, my biggest key to the success is my team. It is the people that actually drive a DevOps. Um, you know, there's skills. You have to have skills. You have to know what you need to do. Your skills in your team have to be diverse. You cannot have people that think the same way all of the time. They have to be able to challenge each other. Um, you, have to have, you have to have the ability to adapt. Um, you know, yes, we have roadmaps, and yes, we have goal commitments. And on a monthly basis, Troy and myself pull everybody together and go, mm, actually, we're going to change our direction. We give them some therapy. They moan and groan. But they change the direction and we adapt and we move on from, from, from that perspective. Uh, so adaptability, high level of skill. And the most important thing is you have to be doused in passion. You have to believe in this journey because it's not, when you are scaling in a large enterprise, it is not easy. You have to truly believe in what you're doing. You have to be extremely passionate. You have to be able to take those knocks, roll with the punches, get up the next day, and actually continue from that perspective. And in all honesty, I believe Ned Bank's key to our success is the actual team that we have. We recruit, and we are recruiting, by the way, I didn't realize I'm allowed to say that. We, we, we recruit, we recruit, you, ha you have to know your stuff. Um, unless you a junior and straight out of university and we're grooming you. And if you are a junior straight out of university, we really look for your hunger and your entrepreneurial skill. Um, if, you, if you have done the stuff, bonus for you. But you have to come in with that ability to coach people. That is what DevOps at the heart of it is. It's about coaching people and take, taking people on that journey with you. So you actually spread the word through your organization. Um, but unfortunately, while we have all those nice things, there were lots of issues that we, that we, that we had to actually really deal with and we address on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, for some reason, big enterprises believe when you start adopting Agile, you don't have to worry about discipline. You don't have to do things properly. You just have free reign to do whatever you want, however you want to do it. Um, and that ends up being, you know, resulting in a loss of good engineering discipline at the end of the day. Um, you're a large moving ship. There's a fear of change. It's an inherent people fear of change. Um, there's a fear of the impact of automation, and in the banking sector, it is something we're dealing with combined with the economic environment that we're currently in that sort of feeds that fear of what does this automation actually do to me and to my job. Um, there's a lack of trust in the automation. If I don't press the button, it's not going to happen. 
how can this machine actually start these things if I'm not there? And, and there's a lack of actual trust in this automation as well. Um, in, in an organization as, as hierarchical as we have, your message actually starts getting lost through your middle levels of management. Um, standardization of your tooling, you, you're then starting to deal with the dichotomy of DevOps where you know, you're actually empowering people, but then you've got to standardize stuff because you, every dog and his cat cannot have his own repository with his own code somewhere. It all has to be integrated together. So it's balancing that standardization and not being a dictator while giving your, your squads the freedom that they actually need to, to thrive from that perspective. Um, there's various elements of tradition. We started in 1888, it's like I said, there's, there's stuff there that are just, it's just old. And then our other problem is because I have such a highly skilled team, they kind of get poached and go to Europe and stuff like that that Dave steals them for. So, you know. <laughs> And, and it is, you know, wh while you have a sense of pride that Goldman Sachs and DBS is taking your DevOps engineers, uh, you are actually losing your DevOps engineers as well. Um, and then, so, so now I'm going to start with, with what we actually started doing. I think for me, Elon Musk's quote really, really rings true for me is that every person in your company is a vector. Your progress is determined by the sum of all vectors. I'm positive every one of you did physics here. <laughs> okay. People moving extremely fast in two opposite directions actually cancel each other out and you have no movement. And at the beginning of this year, as a team, we actually just got frustrated. We had done all this phenomenal work, but um, we were reaching almost a slowdown on our adoption. Um, we had to stop, we had to reevaluate our approach, and we had to accept the fact that our organization was not Spotify. Damn, we were working for a traditional bank. Um, and how do we work within those constraints of a traditional bank? And then we started identifying things in the traditional bank that would actually help us and actually start leveraging those things from a traditional perspective that would move us forward. Um, but we also had to ha land some really hard messages in the organization. Um, and yeah, and, and one of those were self-managing teams does not absorb leadership of their responsibility to these people, to your people. You still have to support them, you have to guide them, and that is really, really critical. You don't set up a squad and run away and hope and pray and come back with swallow management. So what a swallow does is flies down, craps on you, and flies back up, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Agile is not swallow management. <laughs> Doesn't give you permission to do that, <laughs> okay? We then started taking ownership of that consistent message. We literally go into teams. Um, we, we, we really run like proper marketing campaigns. We have Rafia doing that for us. Uh, where, we, where we pushing that consistent message through every level in, that organize, in, in our organization. We started measuring adoption. So you can't have Emotional arguments are pointless. So you go with stats, you go with evidence, and you have unemotional discussions with people. Um, we, you know, for us, continuous improvement is key. We really push the culture, drive the culture from, from, from that perspective. We, reward, we, we, we firmly believe in rewarding uh, correct behaviors. Um, you know, we, we're driving, um, we drive the principles and the guidelines for the teams. Um, we don't expect other people to do that for us. We took ownership of actually doing that ourselves. And most importantly, was actually looking at the system holistically. Because in a large organization, it is a holistic system. 
But I think the most important point for us is that you have to ensure that the core transformation remains externally focused. Nedbank's purpose is um, using financial expertise to do good. That is our organization's purpose. DevOps is there to actually automate, make, you know, push out better quality, do things faster, build applications faster, but it is fundamentally there to do good for our customers, both individual, family, business, and our society in South Africa. And if you have that higher purpose in terms of why you're doing this, it makes those knocks that you take on a day-to-day -day basis a lot easier to, to deal with and accept because you know why, you, why you're going through this tough journey. Um, the other thing that we realized was that um, we did want happy unicorns, people smiling and laughing. So we had to actually also, even though we were techies, even though we went around thinking, what the hell are they afraid of? Do they not really see what we're doing? How can you not see the benefit of DevOps? I mean, really. Um, it was, you know, we had to accept that people were inherently scared. We had to, um, you know, how do you get people to, to do the change? You actually create excitement for the change. You really start speaking a language that they understand, that you articulate um, the opportunities that they will get in terms of what they understand. And you actually listen to these people because as much as you believe you know what you're doing is right, they are actually the ones that are consuming what you're giving them. And you have to listen to them and you have to adapt and change to make things good for them. But like I mentioned earlier, there are some, um, there are some traditional aspects of an organization that large and that old that actually works for you. We have lots of um, Jedi masters, and believe you me, they're actually older than the original Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> they, they, they're really that old in that organization. <laughs> Okay, um, and, 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 and they're knowledgeable, and they're influencers. So you don't do the influencing yourself. You actually get them on board, you invest time in them, and you get them to go along with you on this journey, and you use them to, to influence your organization. Um, you use them to help you stand in front of that CFO and actually get the cash that you're begging for. Um, you know, you, you, you then, the other thing that we do is we found organizations locally and internationally that um, are actually on same, uh, the, the same journeys we are, they're slightly ahead of us on certain aspects, and we actually collaborate with them. Sometimes your boss finds it a shitload easier to hear the message from someone else that you have been telling him for the last three months, but when someone else tells him that message, he actually listens. And if you pay a shitload of cash to one of the four big consulting houses, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and, and then you use community references, and community references really help as well. Um, what we found was uh, we, we really believe in communities of practices. Um, we drive that quite hard. I've taken my management lunch budget and I've actually used it to, to, to buy stuff. We, we bribe people to come to our communities of practice as well. <laughs> Throw your money in the right place. It's an investment. Um, so so we, have, we have gills. Um, we, we do show and tell days where we actually take our, our star squads and we let them tell the story. Developers like to hear stuff from other developers. Op staff likes to hear stuff from other ops people because no one else has their battle scars and only they can talk to each other. Um, we 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 really excited about an internal DevOps day that we want to launch 
and Rory promised he'll be there for us for free. <laughs> um, we, we, um, the other thing that we found was um, you can do master classes, but they, they tend to be generic, and different squads have different needs. And it's really, really important that um, we, you know, it, it's really important that you, you tailor things for people to people's needs. And you give people what they need, not what you believe they need. Um, the other thing with the community of practice, I think it was another um, helping hand that was handed to us, and we do have to tell our bosses that pay our salaries, they do sometimes think correctly, is that they've accepted the fact that we need to, to go back to basics. And we've actually started a engineering practice guild where we've actually brought in um, all of our Jedi masters, uh, etc., into a group. We've really gone back to basics. 12 engineering principles, which we unpack in terms of COEs, and, we've be and we're starting to automate those engineering practices into our pipelines. So, in the middle of the night, if you want to break an engineering principle and rule, uh, one of my guys are the only ones that are allowed to let you break that rule. So, uh, we, we're a little bit godlike. I am named after an a Indian goddess, by the way. Yes, just saying. The other thing that, you know, lovely big organizations, people compete against each other. So use that competition to your advantage. Uh, we, we do the proper psychological thing and call it constructive competition, but hell, it's an MMA fight, gloves on, go for it, boys. So. Um, we have a best performing squad, a most improved squad. We do our success stories in our show and tells. Um, we have an adoption dashboard, and the problem that with an adoption dashboard is um, people who get paid in seven-digit numbers have a tendency of using it as a stick. So you've got to manage upwards when you start using dashboards and stuff like that. And you've got to use these dashboards in a very positive, uh, growing perspective. You don't use it as, as, as a stick. Um, so it's, it's often I write the message, and then they have to send it out of their email boxes. So, and they're not allowed to change it, so I PDF the message so they can't actually change the message and that the message stays positive and it shows how you do continuous improvement. And, and, and you know what? Um, bad news is a gift. You can use it positively, okay? Um, and, and, you know, like I said, we drive the communication across all of the levels. And, and then scorecards are wonderful. Balance scorecards, goal commitment scorecards, call it what you want. The minute somebody has it as their KPI and it touches their bonus, it works for you. <laughs> okay? So, so embrace your traditional elements of your organization. Use those traditions to your advantage. Kill the, and, but kill the traditions that actually don't work for you. Ignore it. Be a prima donna. Fight it. Be the rebel. Uh, but, but use the stuff that actually works for you. You are not going to transform your organization. As much as we like to believe we have the power, I'm not Mike Brown. The last time I checked, he is my height, but I'm not Mike Brown. I can't change NetBank, but I can really use the aspects of it to drive DevOps as, as a culture at the end of the day. Um, what we have is, um, when you're scaling, the other thing, even though there's only um, 15 of us, um, employing for diversity comes with problems. They, they, they do have their own opinions. They kind of do things differently amongst the squads, and, and we wake up in the morning sometimes and realize one squad is doing this and the other's doing that. But what we found was if we have certain toolkits, 
it, one, it allows us to work faster, uh, and two, um, it allows us to bring consistency in the engagements that we actually have. Um, we learned the hard way to do a tool selection toolkit because that, that CFO needs like lots of slides. And it has to be in PowerPoint and you have to have a, a, like a 10,000 line Excel spreadsheet that supports your PowerPoint presentation. So we have a toolkit for that. Um, you have a dev. <laughs> We do, um, we do DevOps maturity assessments. Those are online maturity assessments. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a polite way of telling squads, no, you're not as good as you really think you are. Uh, can we come in and help you get better? Um, we, we, we do the DevOps dashboard, and I spoke about that. Um, like I said, we have a, a, a masterclass um, deck, if you could call it, but it's tailored. So there's consistent messages that go through the masterclass, but we, we focus on subjects that a squad in particular is struggling with based on the output from our, our maturity assessments. Uh, for our value stream mapping, um, which uh, we, we really, really uh, believe in looking at the system holistically, um, we, we, we have a way that we go into a squad, we talk them through a process, we allow them to prioritize what are the big issues that they're dealing with, and then we start addressing those problems from their perspective. And then we have our templates for our, for our, our pipelines at the end of the day. Um, it is a mammoth task. I couldn't find a mammoth last night. It is a mammoth task. Um, but we changing our organization one pipeline at a time, one day at a time. Um, and even an old traditional tough one, if you cook it long enough in a pressure cooker, gets soft for you to actually eat at the end of the day. Okay, so I think I've got lots of time for questions, but uh, I do apologize, there is no code in my presentation deck. Um, I am really old, so you would have seen assembly language programming. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> any questions? Two. Who was first? <laughs> Hi, thank you. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm actually curious about the, you, you mentioned you do a, and I wrote this down, a DevOps maturity assessment yes. internally. Would you be, can you tell us more about what that is, what it comprises, what its goals and outcomes are, how it's measured, anything about that? Are you cuck? Are you really cuck? Are you very, very cuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I assume, I assume... That's a word that means something? Oh, yeah, shit. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't realize you're not South African. <laughs> uh, cuck means shit, so it's, a, it's an African term. <laughs> For a politically correct view, are you bad? Are you really bad? Are you really, really bad? Okay. No, so, so what, what we do is we, we look at your um, agile adoption, your engineering practices, how are you using your tooling? Are you using your, um, the, um, the, the maturity of your tooling? Are you using the tooling correctly? Um, a lot of, we, we folk, it's something that I realized I didn't really touch. Um, we drive culture a lot. Culture for us is really, really important. Uh, a, tool with a, a fool with a tool is still a fool. So while we have lots of tools, if you're not using the tooling properly, you actually will not leverage the benefits. So we really do a culture assessment. Um, how are you using the tools? What tools are you actually using? And um, yeah, so we do f uh, roughly five levels, eh? So we have five levels that, that you can, can, can fit into. We do need to find a nice way of saying it. For now it's one, two, three, four, five. But we will we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, but but we, we, we assess, like I said, just in summary, jokes aside, um, your agile 
your agile practices, your culture practices, how well you're doing using your tooling, and your ability for continuous improvement. All right, thank you. Um, this was very enlightening. It's always great to see how different enterprises are doing this. And I'm looking at this and thinking, okay, what if people in the audience who live locally or locally adjacent, um, Joburg or here, are thinking to themselves, Nedbank sounds awesome. I kind of want to work there. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of hiring that you folks are doing and where it is, and also possibly uh, what are the best ways that somebody can be the right candidate? Okay. I, I am not a plant. I was not paid to ask that question. I'm, I'm <laughs> genuinely curious. <laughs> okay. So, um, first thing, my base training is engineering, hardcore industry. I don't do, hello, how are you, tell me about yourself. It doesn't work for me. I really blank out, I don't care. I need to know um, whether you can actually do the job. So. Um, we start off our recruitment process um, with a five-minute introduction. Troy's the nice guy, I'm the bitch. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you can survive your first 60 minutes with me, you'll survive my tea. All right. Oh, you'll actually survive NetBank. Um, what we do is we do a, a case study. So we do a situational case study. It is typically uh, what a DevOps engineer will, will go through. I showed you all the positive, lovely things that we're doing. There, there's lots of dirt underneath those beds and those fridges, and that's what we actually put in front of you, um, is, is, a, is a case study, a situational case study, so that we can understand from you whether you can problem solve. And that is really key, critical. I can teach you how to use a tool. Um, you should be able to code by the time you come in for my interview. Even if you are straight out of university, you should be able to code. I don't need to test your coding skills in that first session that I'm meeting you. I need to know um, you can problem solve. I need to know you can actually coach. DevOps is not an ego-driven position, okay? You've got to be able to park your ego at home and be there to take a squad through a journey. Um, we do not uh, believe that we are the only people in the organization that does DevOps. We believe we are the evangelists, and DevOps is done by NetBank, not by the DevOps team. So you have to be able to coach, and we really, uh, th the case study is really based on us unpacking your coaching uh, capability about how are you going to go into a squad as a DevOps engineer, more like a consultant, uh, not with PowerPoint decks, uh, more like a consultant that actually goes in and coaches the team through. So we test for your coaching, you te we test for your uh, humility, we test for your, um, ability to, to actually problem solve, because you, you need to be able to think on your feet, and the reason we come in for five minutes and do not explain the organization to you or anything like that is to actually see how you cope under stress, okay? You only have 20 minutes, and you have a bunch of colored pens and an A3 sheet. Uh, thereafter, we come back after 20 minutes, and like I said, I'm the really difficult one, and he asks polite questions, and he's nice and helps you through this process, and I'm a little bit intolerant. Um, so, so and, 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 and for me, it's extremely important because you have a squad that is under absolute immense pressure to deploy, okay? If you cannot deal with people's negatively towards you and, and trying to actually help them and, and know how to help them through the situation, you actually will not cope in our organization at the end of the day and you will, you will not survive this. 
Uh, once you've gone through our one hour interview process with the polite HR person and polite Troy and me, um, you, 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 you then have a proper technical assessment because, you know, as, as much as we talk culture and as much as we want nice people and as much as we, we really believe, um, you know, and then off the four banks, for those of you who are not South African, off the four banks, net banks, the nice bank. We love our people, we hold our people, we care about our people, for God's sakes. Our, <laughs> our purpose is about doing good, right? And about caring for people. And we really care for people at the end of the day. But the reality of the matter is, I need you technically competent. I'm not there to actually train you. You have to come in, you know, running. Unless you're a junior straight out of university, or with one year of experience, you have to be technically competent for us. Um, and thereafter, we, we also, on our more senior DevOps engineers, we assess um, EQ, we assess uh, adaptability, and we assess um, on everyone, we assess your learning capability. Because the reality of the matter is DevOps is not going to exist in its form in about two to three years because everybody's going to be doing DevOps, right? That's our purpose. Everybody's doing DevOps. I need to employ people that will actually learn what's the next thing that's actually coming forward. So, yeah. So we're tough. But we do have spaces opened. <laughs> Um, if you've survived my talk, you'll survive me. <laughs> One, two. Do you want to use this mic? They've decided to shut me up. No, 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 Time's I have eight up. minutes. <laughs> We're based in Johannesburg. Um, we do have... Um, one or two of our DevOps engineers uh, in Paul. Um, we actually find that at this phase that we are in as an organization, um, it is important to have face-to-face -face engagement. Um, if you are driving culture, you do need to be close to your squads. Um, we do have offshore teams that, that we do coach and guide and stuff like that, but essentially our programs are run out of Johannesburg mainly. Uh, we are saturated from a PAL perspective because our dev team in PAL is, is not so large. So unless you can get Darren to move, oh, Darren's not here today. Unless you can get um, a Darren to move up to Johannesburg and you take his spot in PAL, we, <laughs> we, we're a little bit saturated. So we are based in, in Johannesburg. Yeah. And, and it's not bad. Our weather is far better than Canada and Europe. It's sunny there. <laughs>